What have you witnessed a bride or groom do at a bachelor bachelorette party that you thought would ruin their marriage if their spouse found out? When I was in 11th grade my physics teacher randomly broke down in tears, telling us about how his fiance ordered her bachelorette. Turns out it was supposed to be their anniversary. We watched a movie that day. I know a guy who was completely against having a bachelor party, but his friend insisted. He agreed, on the condition there would be no strippers, because his fiancée was against that. They took him to a strip club and paid a stripper to give him a lap dance, and they took pictures of it. After the bachelor party, this friend told him, if you ever pee me off, I will show these pictures to your wife. Years later. This guy was working for the friend part time. He was told he had to work on a certain day, but he couldn't do it. This a chat mailed the pictures to his wife, and they ended up separating for a long time. They're together again, not because she didn't find out, but despite the fact that she did. It never ceases to amaze me how horrible some people can be with no real motivation. Stripper here. One time a guy was begging me and my co-workers to have sex with him for money. No one would. When he was begging me for the third time I realized the guy next to him was the father of the bride. This girl's father was happily watching her future husband try to buy sex. You sure her dad wasn't threatening him saying I can't let you marry my daughter without knowing if you can satisfy her in bed. You know she's a freak in the sheets. This thread is doing a serious disservice to us who just got a stake with their buddies, went golfing, and played poker all night. See, I'm getting married next October, and this is exactly what I want from my bachelor party. I don't want the strippers and crazy parties. TL. DR ordinary stripper becomes disgusting sideshow. It was all pretty standard stripper stuff at first. Then she asks for the groom and has him get on the floor on his back. This chick pulls a bag of blow pops out of her bag and we're all a bit confused. She jams this thing up her snatch so only the stick is visible. Now come the balloons. She has him bite these balloons one by one so she can straddle his face and pop them with her snatch stick. Pretty funny stuff. Once her balloons ran out, she told him to bite the stick and pull the blow pop out, which he did. She turned it around and had him suck the dang thing. I think it's only shocking BC of how gross she was. I mean... She's a stranger and we know nothing of her personal health, but I thought I was gonna catch something just looking at this poor girl. Groom seems a bit uneasy but is going with it. She reaches back into her bag of assorted abominations and pulls out a can of whipped cream. Surely this will be a bit more tame, right? Whipped cream on her tea or something? Nope. She sprays this crap inside of herself, then sits on dude's face. As you can imagine, she is now the whipped cream dispenser in the groom's mouth as her target. It didn't take long for him to decide he wanted his mouth closed for this, so now she's leaking this stuff all over his face and grinding it in there. That's where the energy in the room kinda fizzled out. I don't think any of us expected anything like that to happen. Once she finished with the groom, she was kind enough to turn her attention back to the rest of us to offer various sexual services for the right price. Best man paid for a handy in the bathroom. Groom was offered the full package for free. He politely declined. In fact, he thought it best to call his fiancée and have her pick him up, which he did. We thought she was gonna be pee when she showed up but I think she could see how little he actually enjoyed himself. Shell-shocked would probably be the best description. This is how strippers assert dominance. Also, IT managers. I didn't witness it but it happened it happened in my city to guy I kind of knew. He died at his bachelor party. That pretty much ruined the wedding. Comma pretty much ruined the wedding. Only because the bride found out. My best friend. Bride. Her future sister-in-laws. Both girls are engaged to the husband to be brothers. Got down to g-strings with the topples waiters. Also in their undies. While playing some strip card game. They also were licking the guy's body all over and were rubbing all over them. Funny thing was when it came to the books night the next week the same girls that got naked were all crying because the boys had a stripper when they made them promise not to get one. Ah. Projecting. They reacted to the situation as though they knew the hubs would cheat because that's what they themselves would have done. Did do. In the same situation. Bride gave a BJ to the stripper her future sister-in-law made of honor ordered. Worst thing I have ever witnessed. Fast forward. They are still happily married almost 20 years. 
three kids. I just don't get these giving blowjobs to strippers stories. I like giving head, but sorry, if I were paying someone to mess around with me I'd want to be the one getting off. During my cousin's bachelor party, me and my brother walked into the bathroom and saw my cousin sucking his fiancé's father's dong. We walked out, never brought it up again, and three years later they still appear to be happily married. Father-in-law putting that in a thing you do to my daughter I'll do to you clause into effect. After my best friend's bachelor party, he told all of us he was going to tell his fiance what happened so there would be no secrets, which was fine, but when he did, he left out the part about the stripper we hired to ride in the bus with us and entertain between stops. So two weeks before the wedding the fiance was talking to one of the guys that was there. He thought she knew everything so he said something about the bus stripper. She went nuts almost called off the wedding because what else didn't you tell me and when they still had the wedding I, best man, was nearly uninvited. Catered a party a month ago. The groom tried to force his hand into the bridesmaid's dress at the bar surrounded by people saying come on this is our last chance and her saying repeatedly get the freaking frick off me see. Full on sex with strippers. I went to a bachelor party once where a bar was rented. It started out aim. There was just food and drinks. And then the first wave of strippers came. There was a second floor where the strippers took guys to blow frick them. The bachelor must have gone up with at least three different girls. Then another wave of strippers came. The bachelor had fun, but you know who had even more fun? Every married guy there. They were fricking like it was the apocalypse. The guy who invited me also had a similar bachelor party at a restaurant, which sadly, happened before I knew him so I missed out. I heard the stories though, there were naked strippers running around everywhere. Not only was the bachelor and his friends banned from having another party there again, they were banned from even eating at the restaurant. Comma they were fricking like it was the apocalypse. Sometimes I think I'm the only person who would actually try to survive an apocalypse. No idea if he followed through with his inquiry, but the groom was asking the stripper just how far she would go. I noped out of that one considering they had invited me halfway into the night, so I showed up completely sober to a basement full of banana peels and weird smells. Fairly certain I was only there for 10 minutes tops. Barely knew the groom was friend of a friend so just really didn't care to stick around. The bride just didn't come home with the groom at night. Turns out she slept with another guy and spent the night with him. The first guy she fricked after getting married was not her husband. That's no bachelorette party. I once ended up in a foursome with a couple that was to be married the next day. I didn't know them and only ended up there because a girl I had previously dated for a few months and still had a thing for was their friend and the guy's ex. Both girls got me drunk at a club without me realizing their intentions for the night. It was a very bad situation seeing the girl I liked being fricked by some dude. She told me she was a lesbian, and I really didn't enjoy myself. Awkward next day, when the couple took me back to my car. Upon exiting the car I didn't know what to say, but for some reason went with, good luck with your marriage, they just stared at me and I closed the door. Good luck with your marriage. This makes it hilarious. I know you said it was a bad situation but now you've got a funny story to tell. Guy I used to be best friends with ended up having a threesome the night before he got married. Soon to be wife was not included. Girl I went to high school with hooked up with two guys. Train style. A week before she got married. PSH. Two guys. That's not a train. That's barely even a monorail. I was a groomsman in a wedding where the bachelor party was a week from the wedding. Groom got so drunk and fell off a deck 3 floors up. Broke both of his wrists and had to have his head shaved so he could get stitches above his right ear. The bride and her family were thrilled. My buddy really hasn't gotten drunk since. This was 4 year ago. It'll scan the wedding picture when I have a chance. The bachelorette fooled around with the stripper, but no one knew until 9 months ish after the wedding when she gave birth to a little boy. The little boy was black. Mum and dad were very white. The stripper was black. I didn't die. Frick my best man or become the target of a human whipped cream dispenser, sea thread, or some redding. But I did end up blind drunk with one of the skanky strippers ever to enter the profession. It started off tame enough. 
then there's a massive hole in my memory, then I remember a lot of tongue and heavy groping in the hallway, thank Christ my best man, the one I didn't frick, pulled me off her and out of the house, we wound up in the ditch howling at the full moon. The next day me and my massively painful hangover visited everyone at brought a camera and burned the film on the backyard grill. Good times. Your best man is an awesome friend. Got into an argument about whether or not Jean Grey was more attractive than Rogue. Yet, yeah, my bachelorette party was off the hook. My wife was a bridesmaid for a wedding in Kenya. We both got thrown in jail. Deserves a longer story and more upvotes. I went to one once where the bride cried all night long about an ex that was in the military, saying she was only marrying the groom because he was here. She's pregnant now. So, there's that. Oh my god that is a sad story. All I can say is what I have heard from rumors. My buddy's fiance had her bachelorette party up in Whistler. Apparently she got hammered in the middle of it and vanished with a large group of men. Her friends could not find her for the rest of the night. When she got back the next day she refused to tell anyone where she went or where she stayed. She also will not talk to most of the girls who went as bridesmaids anymore. Her now husband denies anything happened but quickly shuts us up if we ask. So far. Still married 5 years later. That sounds really creepy. Not marriage breaking but I have to share. Stripper came to the house party, and for her final trick she shoved an entire roll of quarters up her snatch. She proceeded to walk around and give each guy 50 cents without using her hands. That's actually rather impressive. I nearly missed my wedding for alcohol poisoning concussion. I drank a fifth of bullet, shared a fifth of Soko with my best man and my groomsmen and I split a 30 rack and a handle of Jack Daniels. I blacked out pretty badly and had a head injury. I passed out not too long after that and in my sleep I was gyrating on the floor. I was cold and my breathing was irregular. They all passed out too. I woke up like 4 hours before the wedding in a pile of vomit and blood. I drove still drunk to my house. It took 2 hours to shower and get dressed. I had to stop at the gas station to buy some Gatorade. I showed up to, to the wedding an hour before the ceremony. Luckily my father-in-law thought it was hilarious and my wife never knew how bad it was. A groomsman's girlfriend did such a good makeup job on my still bloody forehead that nobody knew. I wasn't sober until I was on the stage watching the bridesmaids come in. Never ever ever have your bachelor party the night before. I used to be a male entertainer in college. Pretty much every bachelorette party ended with the bride screwing one of the performers. Like, 95% of the time. I spent a week backpacking, summiting and rock climbing with a couple buddies for my bachelor party. When we got back to civilization, bathed and tried to go out, we were all too tired to party by midnight. Skipped the strip club and took a cab home. It was awesome. I was a bouncer at a few strip clubs. I've seen so many brides and grooms frick the stripper that it's not even funny. In fact, I'm hard pressed to think of a time where it didn't happen. I think the worst one was a bride on stage on top of the male stripper, with one of the bartenders fricking her up the butt while she blew one of the bouncers. Not me. The brides were off limits in my book. Bridesmaids, however. The bachelorette parties were by far the wildest. Hands down. Bachelor parties would get bad. And some of the strippers might get banged. Big bachelorette parties? First they rent out the club or the VIP. Then they get unbelievably drunk. Invariably someone introduces drugs into it. Then someone gets the idea to bring in sex toys. So you had a bunch of drunk frisky women and like 6 guys. One 3 of them who are there to get naked in the first place. Pretty soon women are getting naked and grabbing whatever is handy. And you've been told by the club owner to pretty much let them do whatever they want. My brother-in-law got spanked by a bunch of H in a Vegas hotel room that we spent $10,000 on. He got a blowjob in the bathroom and pass out in the bathtub. Good times. The bride kissed me at her wedding a little over a year ago. Within a year she was divorced and dating another guy we went to high school with. Strangely, I'm persona non grata. A female friend of mine got fricked by a dog and gave another dog a BJ at the same time. It should also be noted that the dogs were about as large as her and dressed as marshmallows. As the Dudatha Dudagosto, sometimes people call me up and ask if I can bring them stuff. 
you know, soda and the like. So I'm heading to this party to bring some soda for the guys. And I get there and there's a stripper half naked. I'm down to clown. So I give the guy his soda and I watch for a few minutes. She must have been a H not a stripper because about 3 minutes pass and she's fully nude and asking who wants to spit roast her. Two guys put their hands up. Everyone else is real quiet. Two guys and H go into the bedroom and I get up to leave after enjoying some soda. I hear dude my wife will never know about this right as I walk through the hallway to the back door. I can only make assumptions about the whole situation because I was there for maybe 20 minutes and I only talked to the dude who wanted the soda. Who was much more interested in the soda than the rest of what was happening. Go to the hub. Type in bachelorette. Do what you do at the hub. Cringe after the fact. Ask yourself why betrayal can possibly be sexy. This woman showed up at my bachelor's party. She was hot with an amazing butt. After a few minutes she convinced me to have some of the most amazing, dirty, unprotected sex of my life. I didn't really feel bad because it was just her and I. And she was my fiance. I realize this story doesn't quite belong in this thread. But I wanted the people losing hope to know that it's not all drugs and cheating. Girl I know rented out an apartment in Miami to have her bachelorette party. The bridesmaids and bride proceed to get drunk and have a good time. As the night progresses, the bride complains more and more about being frisky and wanting to get fricked by any random guy. Her bridesmaids do their best to stop her because they don't want her to cheat on her soon to be husband. In the end the maid of honor ate out her pee in the bathroom for over an hour. My wife and I rented a giant cabin that was split in two. Two families could rent it at the same time, for the weekend. The first night it was separate, doors locked no mixing, and the second night we opened the place up. On the first night I got super high and decided it would be romantic to scale the three story scaffolding onto the top deck to see my wife. I was denied at the top, by my wife, and had to climb back down while my friends also high, laughed at me. After that I started drinking and passed out shortly after midnight. Evidently after I fell asleep one of the bridesmaids puked all over the girl's side of the cabin. My best man fellatiated a dildo stolen from the bachelorette party, and one of the married bridesmaids was grabbing handfuls of crotch and tried to sleep with a groomsman. I miss the best parties. A few years ago I was working at a pretty popular bar restaurant that was frequented by bachelor bachelorette parties. I usually loved working them because who doesn't like penis shaped glitter and embarrassing drunk speeches? But, there was one bachelorette party that started to get out of hand they somehow managed to rack up almost $1000 worth of shots and drinks in under 2 hours. As most servers know, when it's busy you're lucky to get maybe 5 seconds to run off to the bathroom. Apparently I chose the wrong 5 seconds, because I walked in on the bride to be enjoying her last minutes of freedom with the groom to be from a different party, in the bathroom, not even in a stall. They had met less than 20 minutes before. Yuck. A guy that worked for me took some time off for his brother's wedding. He wouldn't say much when he got back. What he did say was, he'd seen his brother naked for the first time in a long time. The police were called, there was no wedding, he was no longer on speaking terms with his brother. Walked in on the groom getting his dong sucked by the nastiest H. She was fat, smelled like something I can't really describe but will never forget, had few teeth left, and bite mark all up her thighs. She was only there on account of the groom's tweaker cousin taking it upon himself to pick her up after the strippers are arranged flaked out. Pretty freaking terrible evening. I plan host bachelor parties. I take them to the great outdoors for a weekend of adventure and fun with the guys. It seems more and more people these days would rather have a great weekend of fishing, rafting, and shooting with the guys rather than hit up the bars and waste a lot of money. A friend of mine, bride, got drunk and went on and on about how much she didn't want to get married to the guy. It was really strange and sad because none of us had any idea she felt that way. Well, there was a large amount of opium involved. Long story short, drunken shenanigans turned into the best man calling someone both him and the groom knew from their dark and sordid past. I was a groomsman, and I'd only known the groom for about 5 years at this point. Fast forward 25 minutes and it looked like we were in a goddamn den. Fiance did not approve of drug use, 
said she leave him if he even hit grass again. She grows now. Pretty cool broad. Actually sounds really sad. She was strictly against drugs. Married an opium smoking douchebag who turned her into a woman that grows her own drugs. Well when I ever get married, my brother will be in the wedding party to be a spy. All this stuff grosses me out. Isn't the point of getting married to be with one person? If you need to frick people right before to get it out of your system then don't even bother getting married. Save both parties the future heartache. Careful. Based on these stories alone your brother might end up blowing your future husband. If you're about to be married, like myself, don't read. I no longer know if I should be freaking my best man, sucking my father-in-law's dong, attempting to hunt down my wife as she is enjoying a spa day as she may or may not be the 95% of women that frick a stripper whilst a great dane dry humps her neck. I was out at the bar when I started partying with a bachelorette party. The bride-to-be was having a fun time, drunk, not too plastered, but having a good night. She started holding on to my arm and not letting me go further than the length of my own arm from her. A couple of her friends went for a smoke and as soon as they were out of sight she looked at me and said if we went downstairs right now, could you perform? I was a little drunk and foolish and I did not click in my response was I've only ever played one instrument in my entire life, thinking about the guitar I used to own. Off we go. Or rather she went dragging me downstairs, towards the men's washroom, inside the men's washroom. That's when I clicked in, and yes I did follow through. Her girlfriends came banging at the store door midway through. Not cool brosapine. At my buddy's bachelor party his married friend had a prostitute sit on his face and fart on it. I know it's not the groom but he later got pink eye and his wife was trying to figure out how he got pink eye lol. What food can you bring to an office holiday part that says, I brought food because the office party is mandatory. The fictional food. The food you tell everyone you bought and was really looking forward to sharing with everyone but which you left on the kitchen counter this morning. An old co-worker of mine cut hot pockets into bite-sized pieces and labeled them Pequites Kaleened. I once brought a can of spray cheese to a cheese tasting party and called it Fromage Automatique. It was a hit. A bag of mini donuts that you obviously bought at the gas station across the street. I attend a white elephant gift exchange. A person is able to pick an available gift or steal another person's gift over several rounds. And brought what I thought would be a gag gift. A bag of tangerines. They cost maybe $3 for 15 and I figured it would be annoying for the person to have to carry around after gifting. Those dang tangerines were the hit of the exchange. People were tripping over themselves to steal them from each other. They took what I intended to be a zero thought, banal, and slightly insulting gift and made it the hit of the party. Your office seems like it'll be chock full of these kinds of people. Bring some tangerines. Our office potluck yesterday. More than one person went to McDonald's for nuggets. Ran into each other in line. So one got nuggets, one got fries and one got cheeseburgers. Another person brought a bucket of KFC independently. Now that's teamwork. Fortune cookies. Not a bunch of the same brand ones, but a collection of fortune cookies saved up from months of Chinese takeout, sushi, etc. It requires planning ahead, but it'll be worth it. Bonus points for sauce packets too. Especially if you just bring Chinese hot mustard packets. Gas station sushi platter. Gotta be careful, that might count as attempted murder. Anything with a reduced sticker on because it's nearly out of date. We've got to eat this before midnight. A jar of mayo, with a single plastic spoon scotch tape to it. Too spicy. I used to work in cookbook publishing. There were always multiple holiday parties so the snooty foodies employed by the various brands housed in our building could try to outdo each other with whatever they brought. I overheard my managing editor relaying the story of a woman who worked there years before my time. Apparently, there were three dang parties in one year, and this lady made one huge cheese ball. She reshaped it after each party and brought it to the next one. People caught on when they noticed the cheese balls become just slightly smaller and misshapen each time. Legend. The leftover Halloween candy. 
I worked at a distribution center for a certain grocery store chain. We had a co-worker bring a pre-made pie from our rival grocery store. A bowl of radishes, and washed. Met, I'll eat them all. I brought napkins last year, plain napkins. We have a guy who brings cups, or he did once and they didn't get used so he kept them in his office and he continues to claim those cups as his contribution year after year. A packet of dip mix and the required sour cream, unprepared, just plop the two down next to each other. Hand to host and say I imagine you can handle this, thanks and walk away. I'm a little late to this party, but this year a guy I work with brought a gallon of milk but no cups. He said somebody always brings pop but he doesn't drink pop. I've seen him drinking pop. We just think he needed milk at home and didn't expect anybody to drink it. Well surprise Dave. I had cups in my truck I forgot to bring in from a party last week. We drank all his milk. I don't like milk and I would have joined you. You're my hero. At my last work Christmas party, one of our quite socially awkward math teachers brought beets as his dinner item to share. Not cooked or prepared in any way, just a bunch of beets, still in that plastic vegetable bag you get from the produce aisle. He was fired soon after, for unrelated but unsurprising reasons. This reminds me of when I was a substitute teacher. For the holiday party there was a list of food items everyone could sign up to bring something. Since I was a substitute I wasn't on the email list and didn't know about the signups. Day before, secretary hits me with this. We noticed you didn't sign up to bring something. It's a tradition for us every year to get a tray of sandwiches from this specific deli. This is what you need to order when you call and handed me a list. I looked at their menu online and the order was gonna be like over $60. It made me so mad because 1. I never got a chance to sign up in advance 2. I was earning less than half of what everyone else earned and got pegged with the most expensive thing on the list. People making over double what I made were bringing things like chips and bottled water. I had been getting treated unfairly other ways at the school and was having a bad experience and saw this as another slap in the face. It was so disrespectful. I went to a corner store by my house. Got the two falafel wraps for $6 special. Cut them up into small pieces. Wrote sandwich tray on the container. Dropped them off in the party room. Didn't attend the party. Stopped working at that school soon after. Heard everyone at the party was pretty upset that the usual sandwiches weren't there. Also heard they had a hard time finding another substitute after I stopped going. Felt good. Treat the employees on the low rung of the ladder with respect. Especially if they are doing things that are important to your company. Got the two falafel wraps for $6 special. Sheer genius frick those bullies. A single sleeve of crackers out of a box. Bonus points if it's already open. An opened can of ravioli, the cheap kind. Nine cans. We had a potluck and a co-worker brought is a big dish of white rice. No sauces or sides, just rice. Absolute mad lad. Edit. For further info, it was a potluck focusing on different cultural dishes, and the guy was Asian, so he definitely nailed it. Also the rice was great. With Asian family potlucks, if there's no rice, the entire party is immediately thrown into chaos. Your co-worker is probably conditioned to bring rice due to past trauma. Gallon jug of water. Had a potluck on Thanksgiving one year. Place I worked at never closes. And a co-worker said he would bring yams. He shows up with a large can of yams. Doesn't even bring a can opener. He won the passive aggressive employee of the year award that year. The next year. Bring same can. Put a marshmallow on top. One year someone brought a sausage pizza from Domino's to a breakfast potluck. Clearly it was last night's delivery mistake because the person who brought it was vegetarian. I would totally do this. It's either that or throw it out. Slightly undercooked elbow macaroni with a single slice of cheese. Place haphazardly on top. Mac and frick it. Skittles and M&Ms mixed in the same bowl. Ah, S&Ms. Open a can of kidney beans, in water, no sauce, and put them in a bowl. 
cold, with toothpicks next to the bowl. If you have time, drain the can place the kidney beans on a fancy silver platter, spread out with toothpicks vertically inserted into each kidney bean. The extra effort should overcome anyone's natural instinctive reaction to kidney beans on a platter to query why you did it, and if cold kidney beans are even good tasty to eat that is, it should look a natural party platter dish and your co-workers will eat cold non-cooked kidney beans. Listen there have been times I haven't had money or food for several days and no gas heat stove for months, and I can tell you that canned kidney beans aren't too bad. Not my go to, sure, but they're cheap and you can eat them right out of the can when you're too depressed to microwave things. Black beans are better, but kidney beans will do. Totino's pizza rolls in a microwavable safe plate. The person who came late to her Christmas party last year, at a house, not at work, with two giant bags of Totino's pizza rolls was an absolute hero. Those got devoured by about 20 drunk people as fast as they could be warmed up. Anything from a supermarket bakery with an on-sale sticker prominently displayed. 50% off mini muffins. Doritos. Everyone is always glad there are Doritos, but man are they a bare minimum thing to bring. Buy Doritos for parties got it. Dollar store imitation crab meat heavily blasted in the office microwave. Ah yes, genuine crab, a fine choice. Those gummy bears that give people the shoots. A bag of chips that is already opened, resealed with a chip clip. A guy who used to work in our office brought a bag of pistachios as a side. He then brought it for the next few years until another co-worker opened the bag. Pistachio guy was mad that he had to buy another bag of pistachios. Chips. We're having one today and this is what I brought lol. Fruitcake. Not homemade, but some weird Christmas wreath shaped fruitcake from the sketchy aisle of your local grocery store. Gave my girlfriend a bag of Christmas candied cereal to take to her party at work that I opened and hated because it stuck to my teeth so bad. Will update with results in the morning. Not a food but like napkins, paper plates, stuff like that. I always felt you could make a pretty good SNL skit of an unenthused office potluck where literally nobody brings food. It's just a big pile of napkins, plastic utensils, paper plates, solo cups, etc. I knew a dude at school that, whenever we do this kind of party, he'd always volunteer to bring napkins. The day of the event he just went to the bathroom and bring paper towels. A too small bag of low sodium unbutted popcorn. Bonus points if you can open a tiny corner of the bag the night before to push that stale flavor to max. Tortilla chips with no dip or the other way around. Oh 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 a bag of baby carrots in the bag they came in is also a good one. Oh 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 or mini packs of raisins. I think that's the one. Mini packs of raisins. I think that's the one. I fee ever work in an office. I'm doing that. Chips and dip but something that doesn't go together. Like Doritos and tuna salad. Don't forget to microwave the tuna. Okay since some people say that this isn't a bad combo what about Doritos lemurs or blaze? Once had a co-worker write on the sign up sheet I can't it's butter. We were all excited to find out what it meant. He brought a spray bottle of I can't believe it's not butter. Which we think is meant to be for spraying pans before cooking. He also took it home after. Little Debbie snacks. I don't cook for you unless I like you. Little Debbie is too expensive for people I don't like much. They'll have to settle for a brand name I don't recognize. A paper towel roll. People of Reddit. What is the dumbest thing you've seen someone do at a party? Was it a party and someone's crappy old truck got stuck in some mud so instead of sobering up and coming back the next day, he makes a Molotov cocktail with gas and throws it at the truck. The truck caught fire and was completely destroyed. Yee, that guy is hardcore as freak. One of my best friends confided in me that the reason she has back problems, at age 21, is because a party she was at in high school was raided by the cops. She was drinking underage and high, so in her confused state she decided that the best course of action was to jump out a window. On the second floor, above a parked car, she landed on her back on the roof of the car hard enough to leave a dent and then ran off. She was actually lucky failing on a parked car, 
Imagine her landing on concrete. Ouch. A rather drunken gentleman at a party my freshman year of college tried to open a non-twist off bottle cap with his teeth and ended up basically destroying two of his molars. On a separate occasion a few years later, I saw someone try this with their eye socket and they cut their eyelid pretty bad. A lot of blood. Crap on somebody. I was at a party in college and one guy was passed out in a chair. Intoxicated guy decides to fart in his face. Pants down. Bends over. Gets close and lets it rip. Only it wasn't just a fart. Perhaps the mass consumption of Bud Light had loosened his balls. But be sprayed crap on the passed out guy's face. He woke right up screaming and throwing punches. I hope he landed one of those punches on the party pooper. This girl came flying down some stairs trying to shotgun a beer using a plastic knife. Then she threw the unopened beer across the room while simultaneously passing out. It was her birthday so no one minded except the guy who got hit in the head with a full beer. This visual is fantastic. Awesome. You know those cheap $1 plastic lighters that you can remove the safety from and turn into mini flamethrowers? A stone dude spent a few minutes tweaking one so it made a 4 inch flame. Forgot he rigged it, then used it to light a bowl. Burnt his eyelashes and eyebrow clean off his face. The house smelled like burnt hair for hours. I find this unreasonably hilarious. Kids at my school lined the second floor of their frat with painter's plastic. Then they opened all the windows and let the faucets and showers run onto the floor. They made this amazing ice skating rink with obstacles like couches to skate around and sit on. It was really cool until the next morning until the house started to make horrible creaking sounds. Everyone got out and a few hours later the second floor collapsed through the first floor into the basement. The party was sick. Frat lost its charter. I never found my skates. At least everyone got out safe. Was there that one guy who was on vacation? Got back and just went what the frick. We had a lot of people over for the Super Bowl. Some of my friends invited a few of their friends. Who I didn't know. But I was still cool with it. Later on in the night as we're all drinking. And I step outside for a smoke with my friend. And return a few minutes later. This guy. Total stranger to me. Had raided my fridge and prepared snacks for everyone. Not that anyone had asked him for food. And I had already provided football snacks. No. He lined up a buffet of several bowls of cereal, sandwiches, microwaved my leftovers, and was fixing a dozen or more plates by unwrapping granola bars, cookies, literally everything that didn't require the stove, opening yogurts and spooning them into a bowl with a serving spoon, used all my lunch meats and cheeses on the sandwiches, he called us all into my kitchen, very proud, I fixed dinner for everyone. Grab whatever you want I didn't know what the frick to do. I didn't want to make a scene and this drunk guy was just trying to be nice. Everyone happily grabbed plates. Many people wasted extras. I took him aside and tried to keep cool as I asked him, what the frick. He didn't understand why I was upset and thought I was being a dong when I asked him to help clean the dishes. TL. DR. I left my party for a few minutes and find a guest gave away all of the food in my pantry. Are you a hobbit? One guy at a house party I was at got super drunk and kept sliding down the stairs head first. He looked like he was having fun, though. He'd climb up to the top and would jump down, Superman style over and over again. I would probably join him. A friend of mine was using his teeth to open his beer bottles. He kept doing it through the night, and he was getting drunker each time. He eventually ended up biting the neck off the bottle because he couldn't get the cap and cut the inside of his mouth on the glass. Holy crap he must have had a freaking strong jaw to bite through glass. Watched my housemate through the window slice a lemon with the blade side up. His hand was on top to push down and cut the lemon. Oh god that made me cringe so hard. Back in high school, a buddy of mine threw a party while his parents were out of town. A mutual friend of ours was sitting at the table, not looking too hot. He stood up, stumbled across the room to the brand new white couch, lifted two of the cushions up like saloon doors, and projectile vomited into the fold-out bed underneath. When he finished, he put the cushions back in place, stumbled back across the room, and sat down at the table again as if nothing had happened. 
saw a guy on spring break decide to jump off the balcony at the hotel into the pool below. At the time it seemed like it was pretty cool, but he belly flopped into the water and had a bad bruise the next day. He's lucky the room was near the deep end of the pool also. He's lucky he's not dead. We were doing long division on this dude's living room wall. Some kid was trying to divide 246 by 41. Ended up with 8. Freaking moron. Please tell me you were using crayons to do this. I DJ'd a college Halloween party. By midnight, a bunch of locals had come in off of the street. It was obvious who was a student and who was a local. The newcomers were there to rage and before too long the dance floor was out of control. I tried to control things by reining in the energy level with slower songs but the crowd would literally explode in anger every time I played anything but club rap. Now, you are probably asking yourself, self, why did this guy not want a high energy dance floor? Isn't that his job just keep in mind that drinks were being spilled. Less aggressive people were getting pushed off the floor and the level of testosterone in the room made fights an inevitability. When you have thousands of dollars of gear in a small room with a hundred drunk, sweaty randus, safety concerns start to become important. I wasn't surprised when the fight started, but I was surprised by who it involved and what it was about. A clearing opened in the middle of the floor as a large, local man screamed at a smaller, female student that had apparently stepped on her shoe. Don't think I won't frick you up cuz user B immediately I moved to intervene before realizing how much equipment I would have to replace if the guy had friends nearby. Luckily for everyone, someone came to intervene almost immediately. It was a costume party and our intrepid hero was wearing nothing but a fig leaf. In the midst of the angry man's insane tirade, the fig wearing fellow stepped between the man and the woman and proceeded to gyrate suggestively, basically grinding on the other guy in the most exaggerated homoerotic manner imaginable. Neither man said a word, where before he had been ready to fight at the drop of a hat, the man abruptly turned tail and left the party, clearly embarrassed and confused. Be at high school Halloween party for some random rich popular girl. Easily over 100 kids there in huge backyard. Saw this guy pouring an extensive amount of glitter in an empty 3 liter soda bottle. Literally half full of glitter. He then tosses a string over the highest tree branch he can near the middle of the yard. Next he grabs a few pieces of dry ice. Pokes them in the bottle. Caps it. And then pulls it up into the tree above the party. Only a handful of people notice him doing this. After he ties off the string to the fence post, he walks past me and says, now would be a good time to go inside. So we walk inside the house and watch through the sliding glass door. Then it happens. Boom. Bottle explodes and makes the most beautiful glitter snow you've ever seen. Everything and everyone in the backyard now infected with the herpes of craft supplies. Dude, I wanna do this now. A drunk guy I knew was going to show off how to do a cartwheel into backflip indoors at a party now sure there might have been enough space in the room to do this backflip in his drunken mind see what he hadn't considered being significantly alcohol impaired was that the space he had calculated would be enough to jump in after running out of the hallway was bisected by a glass sliding door which he likely didn't see in his drunken stupor never mind that the room was rather crowded because I guess he figured people would just stand aside like the crowd moving away from the main characters in a movie dance scene. So, with the environment described, you can guess how this went. Mr. Smarter when drunk proceeds to do his cartwheel, then starts on his backflip, slamming right into the window, ends up on the patio, aghast, and oddly quiet. Then the regular routine of OMG call the ambulance. OMG he's in pain. OMG keep him from touching the glass. OMG here's the ambulance, OMG did you see that led to the party ending prematurely, he was alright, though, lots of cuts, lots of stitches, but alive and intact, TL, DR, drunk acrobat backflips through space and time, great TL, DR, some guy doing 360 no scope vomits, he would spin and vomit then down some more beer and repeat, this was actually hilarious and disgusting at the same time, I was at a show, that's kind of like a party, right, and guy I know had taken too much acid and had taken it upon himself to try to get on stage, so he climbed up a giddy wire like a monkey and when security told him to get down, rather than letting go and falling to the ground, 
He kept holding onto the wire and slid down to the bottom. Bye bye flesh. You could see the bones in his palms. Oh man. That's a bad one. Drugs and anything sharp usually don't mix well in my experience. I was at a party while I was in college and saw a midget girl try to dance up on a guy from behind to complete a girl boy girl grind sandwich. Not that I'm against into height dancing or anything, but the guy dancing didn't have a clue she was back there. Anyways, the guy trips and timbers backwards. The poor girl put her hands up to try and catch him. It was like how, spoiler, S. Cheryl is there and dies in Prometheus. Upvote for the visual. Jake, freaking Jake. Man, that's what we'll call him. Anyway, edit. A lot of people are getting a bad picture of Jake, picturing him as a stifler or bro like guy. I want to make it clear that he was no broser the clown, no matter how much he acted like it. He was a short, kinda skinny guy. You'd almost call him punk rock, but not quite. He had a dark, curly little mohawk with dark hair on the sides. He was just a spunky little dude. Okay, moving on. Jake got someone to spray him in the eyes with axe body spray. He was just drunk and wanted to know what it felt like. Bunch of people said frick no until one girl agreed. She did a quick spray. Sh he says a a a a h h. No. More. Do I t more she yells okay. Frick s h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h h frick that hurts frick frick. Jake's eyes were red and swollen for days. Another party we were at, Jake was wasted and went outside to smoke a cigarette. Right when we're thinking man he's been out there for a while Jake comes back into the party. Naked. Well, not quite naked. He had ripped the Christmas lights off. Somewhere. I don't know where. And wrapped them around himself. While wearing that and the Santa hat he had been wearing all night. He proceeded to run around yelling H-O-H-O-H-O-M who who until someone got him to stop. Another time, we were at a party at his house, and Jake throws a sword across the room. In a party, full of people, the craziest part, besides the fact that no one got impaled, was that it actually freaking stuck into a case of PBR that was sitting on the floor in the middle of the room. The whole room just stops. Stares in awe, then watches as Bia just kshhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
Hey man, freedom taint free. Friend of mine opened a beer bottle with his teeth, and it chipped some glass into the beer so he poured the beer through his fingers into a cup to filter the glass out obviously, and it was a twist off anyway. Classy dude that guy. Watched someone at a party crawl to the bathroom after doing 7 plus shots of vodka. They were shouting fuss roda on each of their steps and then eventually they crap themselves on the dirt. Fuss ra roy. I saw someone snort a shot of vodka then spray pine sol in their mouth. It was all fun and games until he started projectile vomiting the cleanest vomit I have ever smelled. Watched a kid we thought who was 17. Chug a large bottle of Nikolai vodka straight to his head. We were cheering. Until someone asked why the 13 year old was chugging a bottle of cheap vodka. Yee. We felt bad. I once provided a blunt for a group of people at a party. One of the kids looked young but I was assured everyone there was cool. Turns out he was 12. I was not thrilled. I went to a college that is surrounded by an Amish community. Had a fraternity brother that was completely wasted leave a party. Gets in his car and drive off. He only got down the road a couple of miles and crashed his car into a freaking horse. Horse was euthanized. Car was totaled. The guy had a bunch of cuts, bruises and was covered head to waist with horse blood. Terribly bad situation. Frick drunk drivers. There is no reason to do such a stupid thing. A friend of mine was really drunk at this one party. So he sat down on the couch. He started feeling a bit sick and ended up throwing up a bit in his solo cup and just sat there holding it in his hands. After about a minute he looked around the room, lifted his cup, and was about to drink out of it. Luckily my other friend, who doesn't drink, stopped him before he did and then drove him home right afterwards. This was back in college, my freshman year. It was the first or second weekend so my random roommate and I were walking from house party to house party. We get to a house and some guys are playing quarters around the kitchen counter. There's a bottle of Bacardi 151 between them. Some girls are watching them play. One guy decides he's going to impress the girls by taking a flaming shot. He pours the Bacardi 151 into the shot glass, lights it with a match, and then takes it like a champ. The blue flame disappearing inside his mouth. The girls cheer. Now another guy wants to take a flaming shot. He pours the 151 into the shot glass, lights it on fire, and then brings it to his lips. I'm not sure if the heat startled him or what happened but the guy sort of hesitates and then splashes the shot onto his face, which erupts into flames. The other guys start dumping beer on him and the smell is just terrible. His friends took him to the hospital. I remember seeing him around campus a few weeks later with his face all scarred up from the second degree burns. TL. DR. Guy sets his face on fire trying to impress girls by taking a flaming shot. A friend of mine did not blow out a flaming shot before trying to take it. Well he missed his mouth and it went all over his face. He had very bad burns and it required surgery. When it was all said and done and his skin grafts were healed. He was actually better looking haha. <laughs> Put a bowl over someone's head and then hitting him with a baseball bat. You know, like a pinata. But no candy came out. This dude was throwing up, so we told him to go to the bathroom. He sits on the toilet and proceeds to throw up on himself. At a prom after party, people decided it was a great idea to put fully inflated car tires on the bonfire. That was gross. Some butthole convinced this guy that the powdered sugar in the cabinet was C. After he snorted a bunch, we told him, but he kept on doing it because he likes sweets. That reminds me of the time my poker mates gave a newbie to the group a green tea spliff. The smell was awful. My friend walked on hot wood from the bonfire barefoot. And another guy did it with socks. Needless to say he destroyed his socks. Seems like good drunk logic. The extra padding from the socks will keep me safe from the heat. There were some people who were crowded around a microwave drumming their hands on the countertop while keep a steady on then there was a loud pop and they all cheered. Then they opened the microwave door and put more eggs in. Me friend and I went to this kid's grad party a few years ago and he got so drunk high he thought the air vent by the window was the toilet. But he missed so he just peed all over the curtains. When I was in the army, the barracks were pretty much a constant party when we were off for a weekend. 
We had this one guy who was underage, but always liked to have a 12 pack of bush lights in him by noon. In no way could he hold his beer so he was always just walking around in a drunken stupor. Most of us kept our doors open and people went from room to room to hang out. Play PlayStation or watch TV with various friends in the battery in this douchebag walks into a guy's room, pisses into the duffel bag that's standing in the corner, and proceeds to get his butt beat for thinking that he was in the latrine. My friend was so drunk and was taking a crap, there was no more toilet paper, so he used his white tea. We were all wondering why he was walking out the front door shirtless. He threw his shirt over the fence into a creek. I saw a kid take too much acid at a party. He took a crap in the sink then started beating off in the living room until someone kicked him out. Feels good man. I went to Yuri which is a huge party school. I witnessed one kid get ballsy and bet that he could jump off the roof of the house into a bush near the freaking end of the driveway. Of course, with the alcohol, everyone drunkenly called him out about not being able to do it, and so he tried it. A broken arm and leg later, he never drank that much again in the time that I've seen him. Drink way too much, get high on amphetamines, and then make out with a bunch of random dudes. Oh wait, that was me. Frick my life. The title is dumbest, not most fun. What is the craziest thing you have ever woken up to from a night of partying? I woke up in a blanket fort on the floor of my friend's dorm room on my mattress that I apparently dragged up two floors. Need to build, blanket fort. In college, I ended up crashing on a couch in a house I was unfamiliar with. When I woke up, I saw some dude standing on the other side of the dimly lit room. I said, oh man. What a crazy night. Thanks for letting me crash on your couch. We'll have to do this again. Yada yada yada. I went on like this for 10 minutes. Turns out I was talking to an oscillating fan with a hat on it. Not earth shattering. But, when I was about 20 I was living in a party house. Plenty of long loud nights and headache mornings. Lots of strangers crashing. No big deal. But one morning I woke up and headed into the living room and noticed one of my roomies asleep on the couch in a sitting position. In one hand he had a fully cooked, now cold, pork chop. In the other hand he had a salt shaker. I shook him awake and he roused. He looked bleary eyed around the room and then he looked down at his hands. Very slowly, he sprinkled some salt on his pork chop and started eating it. That's breakfast in a party house. My friend passed out on the couch, while the party was still going on. He woke up to go to the bathroom. He walked into the kitchen, opened the dishwasher, and proceeded to pee over all of our clean dishes. When we yelled at him to stop, he slowly looked up, mid-pee, and said just let it happen. I once went to the pub for a cheeky pint, woke up 8 miles away in a completely trashed house. I came to on a sofa bed with around 20 people slumped all over the room. I sat up and a dude the other side of the room looked me in the eye, laughed and said you're crazy man. No one at the party knew who I was before or how I got there and neither do I. Still see them sometimes. Once I woke up the morning after a party in South Philly and went out back for a cigarette. When I was back there I heard some rustling around in the garbage behind this fence. I peeked over to see an old man rolling around in it with a beer in hand. A boy emerged from the house next door and yelled grandpa. Get out of the garbage the old man then replied. You get out of the garbage and continued his trash game. Sounds like you partied with Frank Reynolds. I woke up halfway in the refrigerator. My friend said I got hot. Cleared out the bottom shelf and stuck half my body in there. Good times. Holy crap. I've done the same thing. I was using a 6 foot hoagie for a pillow. I woke up hiding in the bushes outside the barracks. I was wearing a gill suit I had made. So I can only assume I was the ultimate winner of a hide and seek game. A naked, passed out girl who was not there when I went to sleep. Nothing happened, but she perioded all over my bed sheets. That started off looking like a happy story. I live in Tennessee, but I took a bunch of pills one afternoon and by the time they wore off the next day I was on an island close to Savannah, GA. Turns out my GF and had I met up with her boss and his friends that afternoon at a restaurant and drank a few bottles of wine. He was a pilot that had his own, 
relatively, small plane and a place on Tybee. I found out that next day that we drank more and more wine, and I don't even like wine, until we decided to take a weekend trip there. The worst part was that I had agreed to help pay for the fuel and food which ended up costing well over a grand. When I woke up, though, I thought I had driven all the way down there which was scary until I learned that I had actually flown there with a drunk pilot. You would think the drunk pilot thing would have been scarier. After a night of drinking, I passed out on the blow up mattress on the floor. My blacked out best friend woke up around 4 or 5 am to pee and he unknowingly stands over me and pisses all over me. I was not too happy. He doesn't remember anything. One of my friends used to black out and pee on things. He once pee on my bed whilst my sir was with me and when I shook him to snap him out of it. He shouted at me dude stop looking at my pecker you prick then he proceeded to head downstairs and pee in his shoes by the front door. The morning after he walked into town barefoot to buy new shoes. Mad bastard. I woke up under a pile of expensive coats in the lobby of a UN owned penthouse in Vienna. A friend of mine was sleeping on the lobby couch, spooning what appeared to be the door from the men's room. There was nobody else in that penthouse. Him and that door had a wild night together. I woke up in solitary confinement after a huge blackout while partying. I thought I was kidnapped and punched and kicked the door for over an hour until a guard finally came to calm me down. My fists were so swollen I couldn't even come close to closing a fist for about a week after. That first hour was absolutely terrifying. I don't drink anymore. Started drinking in London. Woke up on a building site in Tampere, Finland. One time I woke up with a bouquet of flowers tied to my penis while in the middle of my dorm hallway. Probably not as weird or crazy as these other stories, but it was pretty weird for me. Mazel tov. I woke up alone in my own bed after a night out wearing nothing but a leather jacket, an army helmet and with a pocket full of shotgun shells, none of which belonged to me. And that's all I'd be and remembered about Nam. A ditch. Apparently, I thought it was a good place to sleep because I was too drunk to make it back to my dorm after a party in college. But props to that other girl. Chillest reaction ever. Woke up next to a girl with her back to me in my bed. I went back to bed. When I woke up my roommate asked me about the black midget she saw scamper out of my room. I had sex with a black midget. Scamper, I'm dying. When I was stationed in Korea I wound up drinking with some of the guys in my platoon. We started with just Bud Light, then moved to Jack, and finally one of the Korean guys attached to us brought out the soju. We drank way too much soju, it was awesome. Anyways there's about an 8 hour gap I can't account for, but I do know that 3 of my buddies and I woke up inside my tank in the motor pool. I'm extremely glad the dang thing wasn't running when we woke up. You woke up drunk in a tank. You win the internet for today my friend. I had broken one of our windows and half of my room was covered in white powder due to my neighbor spraying a CO2 bottle under my door since he thought that my room was on fire, which it wasn't. He had also puked in all of our showers and sinks. All of them. This hot girl I was friends with threw a small party with a dozen or so friends since her parents were out of town and everyone got exceptionally s-faced. The parents were coming home early in the morning so she asked everyone to leave at about 2am. It was thought I had caught a ride with another friend, but no, I was passed out cold in her parents walk in closet after throwing up in their bathroom. I wake up, realize where I'm at, freak out, and stumble out into the kitchen where her and her parents are having a nice brunch. Everyone was shocked, and I looked crazy. This was how I met my future wife's parents. Please tell me this is true. I want to believe you're married to hot girl. Woke up next to another girl I didn't know in a place I didn't recognize. She was just staring through me and gently rocking back and forth and didn't respond to anything whatsoever. Creepiest crap I've ever seen so far. That sounds like some bad crap happened to her. Broken metacarpal from improperly punching a wall. Naked people scattered around my house. Trash cans. Safety blockade signs in the living room, traffic cones, so many random things have happened over the years. Another weird one was when my sister and her boyfriend had come back from the bar to my house with a few friends. Well they brought this random chick that they never knew before that night to my place. 
She ended up passing out right in the living room face first on the floor. I wasn't going to boot her out because she was just so fricked up from drinking and or whatever else she did that night. Fast forward 8 hours. I wake up around 930am. The girl is gone. Front door wide open. And a huge pee puddle outlined her lower body on my floor. Poor girl pee herself. I wasn't even mad because I could only imagine how she felt and how embarrassed she was when she awoke. And TL. DR. Random chick passed out on my living room floor and pee herself. I'm hoping she comments on this post somewhere. I woke up on the living room floor of some stranger's house. In a puddle of my own pee. I snuck out before any of them noticed. Still no idea how I got there. Maybe late. Bit after a particularly wild party in our college suite. Every piece of furniture was somehow squeezed into my room. Essentially trapping me in my bed. Horrific fire hazard. But I was impressed they were able to stuff a full sized couch. Love seat. Three dresses and four chairs into my tiny room which already had my furniture in it without waking me up. Good times. My roommate's new GF naked in my bed. I thought it was her twin sister. So I was like. Score until she woke up and freaked. Fortunately unfortunately. Nothing had happened. Apparently she got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And since it was her first night sleeping over. She got confused about which room was which. I woke up in a stranger's house after drinking a box of wine to find my shoe filled to the brim with vomit. Me and another guy were sleeping on an L-shaped couch but on opposite ends. Neither of us remember who puked. I threw those shoes out the car window on Main Street at 10am the next morning. Another time I woke up with one arm and one leg hanging off a deck over a lake. I've woken up completely naked with a female friend. Neither of us knew what happened till we found the just stained boxes on the lamp. One time I woke up in a disgusting abandoned trailer with a backpack full of lawn gnomes and an extra $20 in my pocket. Alcoholism makes for some decent stories. College. Day after this big school festival where everyone drinks a shitload. I woke up with a girl in either arm. One my girlfriend at the time and the other her cute best friend. All of us in just underwear bottoms. Both of their hair was just splayed over my chest and all entangled with each other's. Smelled incredible. I sat up a bit and my knees hurt. Pulled the sheets back and ripped dried blood skin off my knees. There was beer and weed stuck to my bloody legs and a half smoked blunt under my pillow. That was a really good night. Apparently I was jumping from roof to roof and fricked up at one point and tore my knees up. Then got weed and beer in the wounds and made out with two women. As a commuter student, I will never experience this joy. I blacked out and installed my window AC and woke up in a freezing room with the last 5 seconds of old Lang sign skipping on the record player. It was now the 5th of July. This reads like a diary entry. I really like to imagine that you passed out on the 31st of December. I once woke up in an abandoned building. Windows were boarded up. It was almost pitch black. And the flooring was cold concrete. My first thought that I was kidnapped from the club I was at. Woken up by a housemate after a massive party we'd put on. Um, there's some people downstairs. Walked downstairs into what can only be described as an intervention by the neighbors of about 8 surrounding houses. We need to have a word about last night. We've lived here for 35 years. And we've heard parties. This is a uni city after all. But never. And I mean never. Have we heard anything like that. And they each took it in turn to explain how we'd ruined their night. We hadn't tied it up yet. So they were sat amongst the fallout. Including the two 8 foot tall speakers. 5 decks. 3 mixers and a bunch of other equipment. And that was just what was on the downstairs floor. On the plus side. As one neighbor was walking out he did turn around to mention how impressed he was with all the equipment. On the downside. Someone poured beer on the router that night and broke it. People can be buttholes during parties when they don't live there. I remember one time I was at a friend's party and some guys who nobody seemed to know actual broke his balcony. As in, the bottom of it fell onto the deck below. The next morning all the booze and his xbox had been stolen. We assume it was them. Halloween. A few people were dressed as Jedi Knights and I passed out holding one of their lightsabers. I remember waking up in the middle of the night at the same time as one of them, suddenly breaking into a full on lightsaber duel, then passing out again 5 minutes later. Define. Lightsaber. 
It may not be what I'm thinking. Posted this before but, I went to take my B a crap the morning after my sorority had its Christmas party my senior year and I heard noise coming from the bathtub. I thought my roommate had fallen asleep there again but found a brown, black, and white guinea pig in our bathtub with a necklace around its neck that said feed me. B it was also wearing a little handmade paper crown. No one would own up to bringing it or knowing who brought it. It now lives in my friend's classroom. She is a teacher. One morning I awoke to my little old grandma screaming at me. At first I had no idea what she was talking about because I was so hungover but after a few seconds, I realized she was pee at me for throwing a huge party at my dad's house. She spent a good 5 minutes laying into me, for good reason, it was a butthole thing to do, but seriously, nothing can prepare you for being screamed at by your little old loving grandmother after that much alcohol and that little sleep. The funny part, however, came about 10 seconds after she walked out of my room. I had just enough time to bury my face in my hands and say, Jesus freaking Christ, before a cute little blonde girl threw the covers off her face and asked me who the frick that was, which scared the crap out of me because I'd forgotten about her entirely. I hope my grandma didn't see her hair coming out of the covers at least. Very Irish Catholic. <laughs> Went over to my friend's house for a few beers. Todd waves me over into his room. Turns out he got a bunch of molly and is offering me some. I did a small line with him and licked the bag. After that, I remember opening a bottle of whiskey and having an animated conversation about tariff law with my buddy's insanely hot girlfriend. Wake up the next morning back at my place, but naked in my bare mattress. There's a girl I've never met before sleeping soundly next to me, wearing only a bra. The light is on. The window is open. It's 11am and I feel like gnomes are trying to tunnel out of my skull. My knee is bleeding and there's blood on the walls. The girl, whose name I never found out, eventually wakes up, finds her clothes and scampers. I found 7 condoms on the floor that morning. 7. One of them had some kind of black gunk on it, so I may have joined the anal club. But I don't think I deserve to be in it if I don't remember. I went out to breakfast and they officially christened me the goose that morning, duck, duck goose, there was always someone who was much more hungover at the diner the next day. It might have been blood on the condom, vaginal blood can sometimes dry black. Naked in my bed with some stranger man next to me, I had hikies in very inappropriate places. Snuck out of bedroom in skanky underwear to my living room kitchen only to find my best friend sleeping amongst more strange men. Instead of freaking out, I decided to just make breakfast. The smell of bacon woke everyone up. We all introduced ourselves again. None of us really remembered how we got to my place, what actually occurred, or why everyone was either naked mostly naked. But we did end with a good morning of playing Super Mario on my Wii and eating bacon and eggs in my living room. When me and my best friend started cleaning after everyone left, we found empty pudding cups, a couple of empty bottles of booze and a few lost garments from the men. I would imagine it was a very good night. I am pretty sure everyone in the room probably saw me naked, but that's not too big of a deal since I am notorious for stripping when drunk. Funny thing was, when I went to my best friend's place later that day, she lived near a university. We bumped into one of the strange men. It turned out he lived across the street from her. They are still together. I like to think my living room may have had a hand in that. TLDR my best friend and I hosted an orgy party which no one remembers. Woke up in my friend's living room wrapped up in a blanket like a burrito. Took the blanket off and to my surprise I was only in my boxers, which were covered in puke by the way, and had no clue where any of my clothes were. His whole family, including his little sister, were home. 4th of July 05, my best friend lived across the street so we had kegs at my house and scorpion bowls at his, woke up to an apartment full of passed out people, empty kegs and cans everywhere, a toilet full of crap with an apology note floating in it, my front yard looked like someone put a grenade in a dumpster, and the roof of my car was burned, it was epic. I have posted this before but, after a long night of partying in college I took a girl home, what I woke up to I was in no way prepared for. While doing the deed I accidentally slipped out of the vagina and into the butt. She yelped. I apologized. As it was an accident. And we finished up sexy time. 
I guess I jarred something loose because, when I woke up, she had pooped herself and was lying on her stomach. It kind of looked like a brown mushroom coming out of her butt. I put a pillow on her butt, I don't really know why, and quietly creeped out of the dorm room as quietly as possible. Never told anyone at school. I just pictured this situation and the brown mushroom was pretty funny. When I was 15 I woke up on a beach with a KFC bucket on my head about a mile from where I was staying on my first holiday without my parents. This Christmas I woke up naked in our spare bed with a broken finger and no bank card. Went to see my brother cause I had this feeling I'd pee myself and it transpired that I'd pee on the carpets in my parents room. I was only intending to have one drink. My friends and I rented a hotel room for someone's birthday. We could only afford one room so others would just have to sleep on the floor. I woke up at 4am only to notice my two friends having sex on the floor. I really want to get up and pee, but I had to hold it in until they finished moving. I don't know if others knew but I felt embarrassed for them that I didn't mention it to anyone the morning after. You should have got up, pretended that you had not noticed them. Then they would have to lie still and pretend to be asleep until you got back and were still. A few years back I lived in a pretty wild party house. All sorts of shenanigans took place there. One morning I woke up and saw blood all over my room. I look around and my boyfriend at the time has a bunch of TP wrapped around his head tapped with gorilla tape. This thing was dang near a turban. Turns out our tweaker roommate had shoved his head into the drum set in the basement. Another time while living at the same place I told everyone that I was going to go pick flowers after drinking pretty heavily. I later woke up two blocks from my house on someone's porch tucked onto the bottom shelf of their grill, where the propane tank would go, hidden under the cover. I woke up quite confused, and tried to get into the house. Since we never locked our door I started pounding in the door trying to get in. When no one answered the door, which was odd considering about 20 people lived there, I tried to walk around to the back of the house, but alas there was a fence that blocked my way, we didn't have a fence. I call one of my roommates and told her to come unlock the front the door. She goes down tells me it's not locked and I'm not out there. Eventually I figured out that I was at the wrong house and stumbled home. Did you have a period of partying hard, raving, promiscuity etc, and when and why did you put an end to it? Just got sick of being constantly sick and tired. The hangovers and repercussions of the hard partying started to outweigh the fun that I was having in the first place. The whole lifestyle was consuming far too much of my life and I decided I would benefit greatly from trying to get my crap together. Some people also call that growing up. I'm sick and tired of always being sick and tired. Yes, a lot of drinking and a lot of drugs a few times a week. I had my own rule that I wouldn't go to class or work hungover or high inebriated. Once I moved away for college and had to work more to support myself I found less and less time to party without it interfering with class or work. I greatly enjoyed the party lifestyle, but I honestly didn't miss it. Just felt natural to chose adult responsibilities over partying. Of course, it was a gradual change, so that probably helped. I had my own rule that I wouldn't go to class or work hungover or high inebriated. Setting that rule makes partying time shrink fast when you're working a 9-5 and going to school at night, I tell you what. From 16 to around 22-23, it got old at some point and I realized that the people I was partying with probably weren't going to become mature adults. In most of their cases I was right. Yes. From 1925 I was a big partier. Then one Halloween I went to the annual bash my group of friends put on. I was dressed like a Catholic school girl. My boyfriend of 3 years was dressed like a struggling musician. Well he was a struggling musician. We got drunk and had a lot of fun. Our daughter was born 9 months later. We married when she was a few months old. Had another daughter 3 years later and turned into people that go to bed at 10.30 and make bad puns. Ah. The traditional end to partying. 2024, after a while it got old, and when the smoke finally cleared I realized the friends who didn't party like me actually got pretty far in their life. I'm 30 now, and still kicking myself to catch up. Life is not a race and you are not behind. Do not compare the progress of others to yours because you are not traveling on the same path. I was pretty promiscuous from ages 24 to 26. 
not, like, hundreds of different men promiscuous, but frequent sex after the first date and multiple friends with benefits promiscuous. I did it because beforehand, I was really conservative about sex and felt like I was lacking life experience. I stopped because quality is better than quantity, and because sex without connection is more hollow for me than what you get when you know your partner. From age 29 to 33, I was raised when there was a big thing and I took it really seriously so I made a conscious decision to avoid drugs during the time when most of my friends were experimenting with them. Then when I turned 21 I started drinking and for a long while was able to keep it under control. Sure I drank every day but always the same amount and never enough to black out or anything. Then I started working at a high pressure sales office and I meet someone there who offered to take me to cash our paychecks at a local casino. I went and he brought up the idea of going to a local bar afterward. I had nothing better to do so I figured why not and I went. After a few hours, and lots of drinks, he told me he wanted me to go to his car so we could talk. I said yes and when I got out there he had a small bag of white powder. I asked him what it was, knowing more than likely already, and he said it was C and he wanted me to try a line. Whether I was drunk and curious or I just didn't care anymore I don't know but I did it. And it was amazing. It solved a problem I didn't know I had. We were there all night and most of the next day and when I finally went home I knew that I wanted to feel like that every second of my life from that moment on. I started partying every weekend and soon after several days a week. Eventually getting high became my raison d'etre and I was loving life. Then I started missing work and eventually lost my job entirely. But I kept going because I wasn't going to let a little thing like being broke stop me. But after a few months I ran out of people to mooch off and I ended up homeless. That was what finally got me to put the straw down. I'm coming up on 8 months sober now and I'm off the streets but I know I can never go back to that life. Which is sad but the cost is too high. Comma it solved a problem I didn't know I had. I work in addictions. And that is the realest statement I've read in a long, long time. Most people replying seem to be young. I'm old by Reddit's standards. I've had my partying time the last 4 years. I'm in my mid 40s. I didn't really party that much in high school and college. I didn't sleep around that much as a young man. I was married 16 years. When I got divorced. I started dating and drinking more. It was a perfect time. I own two solid businesses, no kids, financially secure. So what if I'm old and bald? I don't know if this was a midlife crisis or me just taking control and wanting to sow my wild oats. I've been essentially a the last few years. I've had more women in their 20s than I did when I was in my 20s. I used to ask my wife for threesomes. She wasn't having that. First birthday after my divorce, my young GF arranged a foursome with two of her other girlfriends and me. I was living in promiscuity and alcohol and it was glorious. Because I own my businesses I have lots of flexibility. I could stay out drinking every night and then roll into work at noon. Last year there was a time when I realized I was spending way too much on alcohol. When you go out 3-5 nights a week and are spending about $100 a night, it might be time to slow it down. So what changed this? A woman. My last girlfriend was told the whole time that I was not her boyfriend and we are not in a committed relationship. However, about 6 months ago, I became involved with a woman I've known for more than a decade. She's wonderful, caring and kind. She also has an 11 year old daughter. Since becoming involved, I've declared I'm in a committed relationship. Also, a kid around tends to change things. Last night, rather than go out drinking and slutting like I would have been doing a year ago, I took my girlfriend, her daughter and a daughter's friend to go see Pan. But you know what, I'm cool with this. I've had more than my fair share of debauchery and shenanigans over the last few years. I'm happy to be back in a relationship that I hope will end in marriage. So really, it's the right woman that has gotten me back on track from a ridiculous but fun midlife crisis partying lifestyle. $100 a night, you must live in the Midwest, or far from any city, I wish I could consider that budget. 1626 I started with X and kept going, moved lots of times so I could keep getting high, eventually ended up on M4 CPL years, I got sick of being treated like crap and having everything I owned destroyed or stolen, finally moved away but then started drinking heavily. Did that for a CPL years with a guy I thought I was with. 
turns out we were just drinking frick buddies and he ended up knocking up some other chick. Decided to go to school for 2 years and got my degree but I was still drinking pretty heavily. After school I got in a relationship with a long time friend. Actually my ex's best friend. We moved in together but I wasn't working, but still drinking. It got to the point where money was super tight and he was stressed and resentful because he had to take care of everything. About 2 years ago I finally got my crap together and got a job. I didn't want to lose him and I was sick of feeling worthless. Things got much easier for both of us, mentally and financially. I now have another job working 40 hours a week. I'm a manager at my new job and still work part time at my first job. Just bought a car and we are starting to put away savings. I'm glad for my past because it made me who I am today but 0 stroke 10 would not recommend. For me it was when things started to get difficult. About 26 ish. I drank and partied from high school through blue collar jobs and through college. Then through a masters and into a better job. It was easy. I didn't have to try very hard. And one Sunday night about 8.30 it suddenly hit me that I needed to not have another beer that night because I needed to be sharp at about 6am the next morning. And I had that moment where I realized that my job was pretty dang challenging and that I needed to be focused to get any better at it. But then I thought about all the hobbies I had accumulated, how I wasn't overweight yet, and all the sex I wanted to have. I realized that a few beers never got in the way, but 10 would. I probably needed to chill the frick out if I was going to keep doing well at anything. Where the frick were you all partying at 16? When I was 16 I mostly stayed inside and played games. Depends on where you live but when I was 16 we would have bush parties, hang out in parks, or go to someone's house where there was either no parents or the parents didn't care about drinking. Then again it might be different from your country. Where I am drinking age is 18 stroke 19 so people start drinking earlier. I started going to bars and clubs at 17 and that was later than some of my friends. From about 1824, I grew up in a pretty strict home and as soon as I moved out, I found that wonderful world and stayed in it throughout college. It's just less fun when you have a full time career and want to spend your weekends actually doing something that's not bellying up to a bar or trying any drug that's put in front of you. Mine only lasted a couple of years. It ended when I was 18 and my father, a cop in the same town I lived in, arrested me for underage consumption. It was a good thing. It helped straighten me out. Officer buzzkill over here. There was a point in college where I could drink a fifth of Smirnoff vodka while pre-gaming with friends and then go out. This happened like every weekend for 8 months when I was 21-22. I was a small 120 pound girl and could drink anyone under the table. But I was so fit and healthy otherwise that I never had any repercussions besides stereotypical hangovers. Not so much anything wild by just the amount I could consume is shocking to me when I look back on it. My two best girlfriends and I would also sometimes play a game called finish the handle where we had to finish the handle of vodka together before we left to go out. I also remember in the middle of this streak I went to Northwestern University's Dillo Days to party with my best friend who attended school there and her friends thought I was insane the amount I consumed that Saturday and was still standing and functioning. I had like 3 mimosas and a bloody mary to start the day, cleaned off a fifth of Smirnoff by 3pm and helped win a case race by 6, then just drank whatever else I could find lying around in people's fridges that no one seemed to care about or claim when I asked if I could have it, ugh. In my mid 20s I started experimenting with drugs. I'd never been a big drinker or smoker, they both mellowed me out and half the time just made me want to sleep and be lazy. Then I discovered C and ecstasy. I'd always stayed away from anything harder than a blunt, because I was focused on college and the following career. Well, I gave everything to studying, and the career wasn't there, graduated right at the economic crash. So I adjusted, I found a career that was interesting and incredible, but not what I had wanted. I worked hard, saved up a few thousand dollars, and sold almost everything I had and bought a one-way ticket to Europe. I lived on next to nothing, but as I made my way from city to city, I'd occasionally find work, and I met a girl who was snorting coke like it was the fountain of youth in powder form. I tried it, and my life changed. It was beautiful. My body felt orgasmic. 
and I felt more extroverted and alive than I had ever felt before. The hangover was non-existent, and my focus shifted from self-revelation and cultural exploration to reliving that high. In the same time frame, we tried ecstasy, well, MDMA first, and I'd found a drug that could give you hours of pure limitless happiness and pleasure. Jesus, the drug is incredible. The first time was like nothing I've ever experienced, I'd never been that happy in my life. So, between coke and MDMA ecstasy, I was getting high almost every night. We'd drink, go try to score, then get high until we ran out. There's nothing more depressing than the moment you realize the high is fading and you don't have any more stuff. This went on for close to two months. It became a ritual, and after a while I didn't appreciate anything in life. The truth is, drugs are incredible on a level that normal life can't compete with. The feelings you get while you're high are so intense and enjoyable that you're left looking at the remaining hours in the day with a sense of apathy. Nothing can compete, and eventually I just got tired of not being able to enjoy anything when I wasn't high. I wanted to look at a beautiful landscape and feel the way I used to feel. I wanted to eat a nice meal and appreciate every flavor. I wanted to be excited by life again. Even if it was mundane in comparison, they don't teach you that in school. They don't explain the intense pleasure and happiness that drugs can bring you. It's not that drugs are bad, it's that they're so good that life itself becomes bad in comparison. And that's a very, very dangerous thing. It lasted all of one day. The first time I got drunk, it set off my chronic gut condition. Apparently enjoying alcohol isn't an option for me. 1820 living in Germany. When I wasn't working I was traveling and partying. It stopped when I moved back to the states. 1722. The partying drinking got more frequent over those years where we were going out multiple times a week for Wing Wednesday. Thirsty Thursday, Friday, it's Saturday, our friend circle got bigger and bigger and bigger where the average party was pushing 30-50 people. Then people starting bringing their friends who brought their friends, and it started to get messy, people stealing things, fights, someone puked in a wash machine, strangers having sex on the deck, then it just got old, when it got too big and too many random people partying, it started to lose the appeal, and cleaning up the next day was heck, people always said they would help, but of course no one did, our friends all took turn hosting the parties so it wasn't always at my house. We even had a cab driver that would hear the same few addresses calling for a ride around midnight and he would come and be our cab driver and we all thought this was great we had our own driver, when in reality he was a total creep preying on drunk young women. I would say it peaked around 2022 and the last year was when the rose colored glasses came off and you started to see how screwed up it was. The amount of booze we individually drank before we went out, pre-drinking was disgusting. Easily 2-3 bottles of wine for one person. Or girls were drinking 3 stroke 4th of a 750 milliliter spiced rum alone. Of course lots of shots in there too. Same old pre-drinking. Leaving the party at midnight already drunk to go to the bar. Leave the bar at 3. Eat fast food. Go to an after party. Go home at 5-6. Drinking brings a lot of drama. Every night we went out something happened of some sort. It just truly got old. I finished high school and was going to university during this time so by 22 I just had to slow down. And 80% of our friend group did the same. Our huge friend group dropped 50% when the frequent parties stopped. Then our group just grew up. Got long term spouses. Adult jobs. Bought houses. Engaged. Marriage. Babies. The whole bit. Now I would say there are probably 3 girls left from our original group that are almost 30 and are still living the same way we used to. We are still friends but in the sense we text once and a while and once a year plan a girls night. Watching almost 30 year old women behave this way is sad. Nothing wrong with going out once and a while. But there is more to life. I am still in my party phase. When I was 16 20 I played in a punk rock band. Typical drinking and smoking weed. When I was 18 some friends convinced me to go to a rave with them. I took my first role. A blow dolphin. And loved it. I threw myself into that culture. I'd hit up every underground rave in my city and frequently take road trips to raves out of town. I was 20 when I took acid for the first time. 
I took about 3.5 hits of family fluff and lost my mind at a small citrons festival. I fell in love with psychedelics. After that festival I started going to larger events like Wack Rosa, Underground Sound, Harvest Festival. If anyone is familiar with the legendary Schwag stock parties at Camp Zoe we've probably met. Happy Schwag. This is where I became familiar with almost everything. LSD, Shrooms, DMT, MXE, Ketamine, MDMA, MDA, Hash Oil, C, you name it. I just turned 28 and I have still been seeking out raves and festivals. And I make a good effort to see local music a couple times a week. During that time I also earned a college degree and met the love of my life. Somewhere around 24-25 I learned how to really make it work. I learned I didn't need to be out of my mind for every event. I developed a healthy respect for substances and when I did decide to go all out I would make sure to space those experiences out by a month or more. Now my girlfriend and I are saving money to go into food vending so we can party for a living. No signs of stopping. You live the dream. I partied hard from 1726. A big reason was because I bartended through college and grad school. It really didn't matter if I showed up hungover to work. Most of my friends worked in food and beverage industry so they had a similar lifestyle. So it didn't seem weird to be partying hard all the time. I finished my masters and became a teacher. I wanted to be a good role model for my students. I take my job very seriously and I would never show up hungover to work now. Also I have some teacher friends now and while on a Friday we go to dinner and have a couple glasses of wine, I no longer stay up all night drinking and doing drugs. I am still friends with a lot of my bartender buddies but it's understood that I will only attempt to rage in all my former glory if it is your birthday. Otherwise I'll be leaving the bar promptly at 10 to go to bed. Mood Swings from 99 to early 01 I was raving almost every weekend and heading to the club nights a few times during the week. Ecstasy was the drug of choice. Firstly, I was in university and my grades tanked for a bit. Secondly, I'd get more depressed than I was previously used to and that was a warning sign I listened to. Stopped taking ecstasy and kept going out but it wasn't really fun anymore so I slowly hung up the huge raver pants and made it a thing of the past. Started late, in my 30s, got addicted to crack, dealt coke, lived next to a bar, I did shitloads of dope, smoking, shooting, was high and drunk every day, I put myself into situations where I could easily have been raped murdered, seen some crazy crap, stopped because I just couldn't go on like that, 10 years later, I was able to do that because I lived with the dude whose house we dealt out of, I procured and weighed, while he would distribute. I just had to be sure there was enough money left for the next day's re-up. I also got all the overage after the sack was weighed out. Crack dealers would give me freebies for using our scale, and sometimes they would want me to test their batches. So it was everywhere, and easily accessible. I was still alive, despite my best efforts, and I knew I had to stop otherwise I'd have absolutely no future. Now I am back working doing the things I did before drugs, making good money, with a chunk of change in the bank. It had been so many years that I never thought I'd get back what I lost. So grateful to be out of that lifestyle. I am 48 now, and it took me about 4 years from cleanup to present. It's tough, but so worth it, D. Holy crap there's some cautionary tales in here. I was a shy introvert up to my mid 20s, brainwashed by dare and afraid of displeasing authority figures. Then at 27, after breaking up with the only boyfriend I'd ever had and following that up with 3 years of celibate hermit artist lifestyle, something in me just snapped. I got on OkCupid and got on Craigslist. I frick men, women, men and women together. I went to an all women sex party. I fricked strangers in cars and public parks. I personally had no drug hookups except weed. But I realized men off OKC would happily share their drugs with me. I tried acid, MDMA, opiates, coke, amphetamines. Around 30, I started to get weary of doing all this with strangers, and pining for better connection with other people. After a few failed starts at a relationship, I went on a date with someone expecting just a hookup. We did MDA together on that first date. We're still together 2.5 years later. We have a crew of friends who all started partying in mid late 20s or later. 
all have life goals, careers, very intelligent, very functional. We like to go out to a bar a couple nights a week and have a few drinks, or have a couple lines hanging out at someone's house, and some weekends we go to campouts and go hard. I've done lines off a lot of asses and tea, but all the folks close to us put functionality first. It's no fun trying to maintain a friendship with someone who's always fricked up we've known a few of these folks. 2. I'm 33 now and unless it's a special occasion, I like to be in bed by midnight and up at 8 the next morning. Sometimes it's nice to erase reality for a day, but it's a lovely feeling. 2. Knowing that sobriety will come back and I'll be able to go do little life things that have nothing to do with partying again. I think overall an exploratory phase is good for people as young adults. Unfortunately, it seems to start very young for a lot of folks, and you may not realize you've gone over the edge until you're in free fall. From 1522 I went out pretty much every Friday. I stopped because I grew up and don't think getting s faced every weekend is fun anymore. Plus the hangovers got way worse than when I was a teenager. Yes, I'll never ever stop or grow old for that matter. All my friends have girlfriends now and are getting sedentary. Not me though haha <laughs> the old freaks. Go to be a loser to want to stay in on a Friday night. I'm so lonely. After I got divorced in my mid early 30s, I was already in good shape and relatively young looking, so I fit right into bars and clubs with my identical twin brother. Lots of blow, lots of sex, lots of random crazy crap, like two people simultaneously doing lines off a girl's butt or pee. Once ended up at a crazy orgy sex party, I didn't participate, I was a little too weirded out to be turned on, like. Were they wearing condoms? I didn't see any laying around, but I saw plenty of people getting railed. Raving and going to techno clubs a lot, taking lots of drugs, even selling some to my friends. Then I just got sick of the drugs for different reasons. At my last rave I was with my two best friends. We took Ma, Speed and LSD. The night was just too crazy for me. I've never seen my friend so much destroyed. One of them couldn't even speak properly because of the high dose of MDMA. Then we decided to take LSD. We split the dose in three to get to light trip. But the dosage was way too much and it started to kick very late. Imagine all of us bad tripping at 16pm in the car without food or water. We just forgot lick newbies. Police was waiting outside the forest. The worst part is that we blocked everyone with our car. I was driving. That was badly parked. 20 people had to move it by carrying it to the side of the dirt road in the night so they could go back home. Everyone one hated us. Especially me since I was driving. Some would have beaten my butt if I wasn't bad tripping that much on LSD. When we finally got home we all agreed that it would be our last party of this kind and that we went way too far. We are intelligent people and we really fricked this night. It is still difficult to remember it. I had nightmare for weeks. I will always remember my bad trip and how sick and paranoid I was. Awful. Then we decided to take LSD. Imagine all of us bad tripping at 16pm. Story checks out. I did for a summer. You can get addicted to coke really quick guys. Ended with me broke, homeless, and stabbed a guy in a trailer park. Please elaborate. I started going out for a few beers when I was 15, but nothing crazy. 16 is drinking age in my country. I only started clubbing a lot when I was in my mid-twenties. I actually stopped drinking at 18, and never did any drugs, but I went clubbing 5-6 nights a week. Didn't stay out as long as some of the others, but hooked up quite a bit. Got into most places in town for free, cause I knew DJs, doormen club managers owners etc. Completely stopped when I went abroad for work at 29. Didn't really get back into it when I returned. I did go out occasionally, and bumped into a lot of the people I knew from before. Some places I could just go to on my own and know I'd run into some familiar faces to hang out with. It's just weird how I moved on, have a career etc. And some of those people are still right where I left off. Still doing drugs, still don't have proper jobs, late 30s and done nothing. Now, 40, I hardly go out at all, partly because I moved abroad again about 5 years ago. Actually, in the last country I lived I did go out a few times a month, and I do drink now, but very moderately. 
throw away. I partied from 16 to nearly 30. It started with a lot of drinking. Then I started smoking weed multiple times a day. Every day and would drink myself to sleep. I made it work by doing restaurant jobs and dealing. It was pretty easy, to be honest. I had a little studio apartment in a crappy part of town. A few friends and lots of girls. Girls love to party. In my 20s I started doing a lot of coke too. Mainly to keep me from getting too drunk. Always looking for the next thing I started freebasing and occasionally buying crack off the street. For the most part dealing kept me in money and drugs though. I only really struggled when the supply lines were disrupted. Somehow I never got arrested, I'm not sure how. It all came crashing down when my best friend had a mental break. The alcohol and drugs just kind of broke his mind. He ended up punching through a glass door trying to break into his ex's house. I found him in the bushes outside my building, covered in blood and crap, crying like a baby. I cleaned him up and called his parents, who I hardly knew, and they trucked him off into rehab. He ended up in and out of prison, on and off the streets, until he died from an OD. I continued to party with our friends but no one seemed to care what happened. It was just part of the life. People drop out. I thought about all the people in the room, most of whom I'd only know for a few months. I had no old friends anymore. The crew I started with were dead, jailed or in diversion, and a few got religion. Everyone in the room was much younger than me too. I was the old man of the scene at 28, so I quit. I just quit everything. Got a job waiting tables in a fancy restaurant to pay bills, and went back to college. Nothing makes you feel old like starting college in your late 20s. It wasn't that hard either, physically. No huge withdrawals and only minor cravings. The hard part was the loneliness. All of my relationships had centered around drugs and alcohol. I had no family willing to speak to me. I was completely alone and not sure how to make friends. I had never trusted anyone in my life, really. So even casual friendships were hard, and still are. I think everyone has an angle, a dark side they aren't showing. Everyone wants something. It's been nearly 10 years drug free. I still drink, but nothing like I used to, and life is, okay. I have a good enough job, a one bedroom in a nicer area. Things are, fine, and I'm good with that. I'm good with being fine. I miss my best friend though. Alcohol snobs of Reddit. What are the most egregious alcohol sins you have witnessed at a party? My very drunk friend mixed Irish cream liqueur and Coca-Cola. The acidity curdled it and the carbonation foamed it, until he had a 2 inch skin of Bailey's cheese at the top of the cup, and he drank it. I saw a girl use some 1820 year old Glen Livid, or Glen Fiddick, can't remember, scotch for a mixed drink. That girl was my GF. Was. At a party at my place, a guy took that big plastic vegetable tray from the fridge. Filled it with a bottle of expensive champagne and added a bottle of cheap vodka. Piap started to drink out of that with straws. Dafuk. I mean I mix vodka, blue power raid and mountain dew together, and drink it by the 2 liter. That's classy, right? In high school we used to drink death juice aka vodka, monster, mountain dew, rainbow sherbet, and sour gummy worms mixed together in a punch bowl. It got its name because we spilled some and it attracted fruit flies, all of which died shortly after coming in contact with it. Once saw a friend of a friend looking for mixers in a fridge at a party. He pulled out soy sauce and mixed it with his vodka. I said, hey man, that's soy sauce. He looked at me and said haha, yay. Then drank it and immediately threw up. Wasn't even drunk. He just didn't hear me correctly and thought he was mixing in some cocktail flavoring. Poor guy. My husband and his old roommates many years ago were drinking and somehow the closest thing to a mixer they could find was Old Bay seasoning. So they were drinking vodka with Old Bay. Miller. Milk. Raw egg. Blend. Dumbass deserved that extended bout of projectile vomiting. Same moron decided to pour out a nearly full bottle of a friend's home brewed mead because he wanted the bottle and the friend could just make more weird wine crap. He's single, ladies. Line starts to the left. The mead wasting is inexcusable. The beer milk egg blend is an ancient drink referred to as a flip or a beer flip. When I bartended in my early 20s and discovered it, it horrified me just as much as it does today. I got two. 
One was two of my friends drank vermouth because we ran out of alcohol. The second was a chugging contest with $200 scotch only for the kid to throw up 10 minutes later. There was plenty of crappy liquor around, and the guy who owned it was not very happy. There are some sweet vermouth that are pretty good. I've seen more than a few people drink Carpano Antica over ice. Chugging scotch is inexcusable though. Not at a party but there was a post on our DIY the other day of a guy who redid his kitchen beautifully but installed his wine racks literally on either side of his oven. He justified it by saying he only buys cheap wine but still at that point you would be better off just buying vinegar and drinking that. I am not an all the time drinker, and I usually just get whatever bottle is under $20 and doesn't taste like industrial degreaser, but I received a bottle of nice whiskey as a gift a while back. I'd occasionally pour a glass and slowly savor it, so a friend I didn't know well was over and asked if he could have some. Of course I said yes. Mother drank most of the bottle. Like, could you not problem drink my nice whiskey? I have cheap liquor if you just wanna numb your soul. I was really drunk in college and tried to make a white Russian by pouring milk in a glass of the cheapest vodka I could find, and was sick everywhere. Dude straight up stole and hid the bottle of vodka I brought. Knew something was up and his roommate let me search his room for the bottle. I found it's in his closet. A friend of mine was at a part and went to mix himself a rum and coke. Being drunk, he mistook a red can of Tekkat beer for a coke. So he made himself a rum and Tekkat. That crazy son of a bee drank it anyway. That's the opposite of an alcohol sin. Dumping the concoction down the drain would be a sin. Late night decided to play be a pong at 27 years old. A guy goes to the fridge, grabs a blue moon and a goose island bourbon barrel county and mixes them 50 stroke 50 in each cup. A friend of mine threw a bottle of blue label over his shoulder because another friend joked it was just colored water in it. We handed to him for the honor of opening it as a birthday present we all pitched in to buy. The night was quite awkward after that. Tragic and all, but if the guy's going to throw a glass bottle full of anything over his shoulder after it was given to him as a gift, he probably has some other crap going on. Once saw the guy drink a bottle of triple sec mixed with Sprite because that was the only booze left. That guy was me. Sigh. So many years ago. It was the first college party I had ever been to and some older guys asked me and my buddies if we wanted to shotgun a beer. All of us had practiced for this exact moment dozens of times at our high school parties so we head outside and get ready. Everyone cracks their beers and starts drinking. But one of my dumb dumb friends had grabbed a fancy craft beer pounder. He chugged the entire thing and then threw up because of the sheer volume of liquid that had entered his stomach all at once. Shotgunning pounders is dumb. Shotgunning good beer is dumber. But throwing it up in front of everyone was dumbest. Don't waste good beer. Once I was at a high school party and took a swig of vodka out of the bottle. The girl who was throwing the party's mom informed me that if I wanted to drink liquor, I had to do it out of a cup. So I guess I committed a sin. In high school a friend and I raided my parents alcohol cabinet and we ended up mixing fine scotch and red bull. Now that I am a whiskey loving adult I hang my head and cry every time I think about it. I haven't seen anything that bad, but everyone in my college town would keep their bourbon in the freezer and serve it freezing cold, it was the strangest thing. Not alcohol but related, had a huge tin of those expensive Luxardo cherries for old fashions and Manhattans at party. A woman just calmly took a double rocks glass full and was casually eating them in my living room. A simple jar is $25 plus. God dang do I love Luxardo cherries. Once watched a documentary on the habits of the Chinese new rich, there was a winnaber in Shanghai which served extremely expensive imported French wine, at least $1000 a bottle. The clientele would commonly buy a bottle, pour half a glass and top it up with coke because they hated the taste of wine. They just wanted to be seen drinking it as a status symbol. Mind blown. China F. Guy took a beautiful, single malt 15 year old Glenlivet. Mixed it with the most amazing smoke and wood of a 16 year old single malt Lagavulin, and then with coke. What. The. Frick. I bet it was delicious ahahashes. 
In high school, a friend's mom was going through a divorce. The new freedom and stress of the whole thing resulted in her going full blue eye shadow phase. There was a complete lack of rules and the presence of a swimming pool so naturally it became our hangout spot. Now that the scene is set, one Friday night some crap goes down with the soon to be ex-husband and my friend's mom drags out an old chest from storage. This chest is the sort you might inherit from a great grandparent that brought everything they owned when they immigrated to the states. She tells us to break into the chest and it's ours. It's open in 5 minutes maximum. We find it contains my friend's dad's scotch collection he has been working on since college. The guy was a doctor and didn't really blow money on toys. I guess this was his thing. The mom takes a bottle and leaves us to the rest. Our first bottle is opened and the 5 or so of us sit down and try to enjoy this crazy expensive scotch. It didn't take long for everyone to admit we hated it. The entire chest was then promptly mixed with Dr. Pepper and consumed over the next couple days. The mom evidently finished her bottle. She came back a couple hours later, changed the music from Sublime to Fleetwood Mac and started to dance around and show us her nipple clips. Still the only time I've seen nipple clips. I was at a friend's wedding where the wedding party were all served some vintage crystal. Can't remember which. The rest of us just got some standard Australian sparkling wine. It was fine but no crystal. Anyway I was up at the wedding party table chatting to my mate, a groomsman, when his girlfriend came up said this wine is crap and poured what remained of her glass of $17 a bottle wine into his glass of $400 a bottle crystal. Very rude. Another time, I bought my mate a bottle of Glenfiddich 18. Not the best scotch I know but it was fancy for us at the time, as a moving in present. A few of us were standing in his kitchen drinking it. He offered his partner a sip to try it. She took a sip, spat it out and poured the rest down the sink. To our amusement horror. That is an acceptable time to defend us for someone. Went to pick up two of my friends when we were in high school and found them s faced. They had somehow gotten their hands on a bottle of crappy vodka and were taking shots. The only thing they could find in the house to chase it with was milk. So they were doing vodka shots with a skim milk chaser. It was extra gross when they puked a little later. A white Russian is vodka and milk with a coffee liqueur. So the two ingredients aren't that incompatible. Although they missed out on the part of that drink that actually makes it taste good. My parents would occasionally buy a bottle of dry red wine. Nothing too expensive. But something that still had some class to it. Being the good son-in-law that he was my dad would always offer a glass to my grandfather and then try to hold in the groans and mask the pained expression as my grandfather would add liquid sweetener to it. I'm imagining someone who lived through prohibition when mixed drinks were created because the alcohol was so horrid. My mom recently got over being a white zin lush, so I can relate. Old roommate's friend. Real big load that guy. He would pride himself on how knowledgeable he was on food and liquor too. Made not one, but two whiskey cokes with my bottle of rendezvous rye. It was about $80 and I had it stashed for sipping, and I purchased another bottle of whiskey for mixed drinks. I was steamed. The night before my brother's graduation I ordered an old fashioned at a hole in the wall bar. They made it with fireball and sweet and low. Fireball and sweet and low. Just tell me you don't have whiskey and I'll order something else. Christ. Good God. That goes beyond sin. That should be a crime. With, like, jail time and fines and stuff. A friend's wife once used half a bottle of Hill of Grace to make spag bowl. I am glad we were visiting for dinner. Otherwise I think there might have been a domestic violence incident. Incidentally, best spag bowl I have ever eaten. I'm not that much of a snob, but this was a little too much for me. I was working at a high-end bar in LA, and this Hispanic guy comes in, still dressed in work clothes from some kind of construction work, or something along those lines. He's dirty, and that's fine, I don't mind. Nothing wrong with a hard-working man having a drink after the day is done. Our place was an odd choice of venue, but it's a free country, and technically we didn't have a dress code. But then this guy proceeds to order a Johnny Walker Blue label, and coke. If you're not familiar, Johnny Blue costs about $200 bottle in the liquor store. At our bar, it was $50 shot. This dude slams 4 of these, and leaves without tipping. 
I almost asked the bartender to use rail scotch instead, because this dude wouldn't have known the difference, but for whatever reason, I didn't. Now, I'm a single malt man, myself, and the blue label is a blend, so it's not as sacred as, say, a Balvenny Port Wood, or a Lagavulin Distillers Edition, but one does not mix a fine scotch with coke, unless one is a philistine. Okay, maybe I am a snob. Not at all. Those spirits have personality, and mixing them with coke is like taking your celebrity crush to an episode of Ricky Lake. Some dweeb brought a bottle of whiskey and he wanted to just drink it straight. I offered him some coca cola so he could mix it, and he refused. He didn't even want any ice cubes. The madman. My birthday party at my house last year. I had one of my friends take it upon himself to serve a couple other friends a rare bottle of whiskey. It goes for 500 to 800 bucks a bottle. I go down to my bar and ask what they are drinking. Rob's been pouring us whiskey cokes. One of them says. I ask what whiskey they were drinking and he points to a now empty bottle back on my shelf. That one. Those were some pretty pricey whiskey cokes. Common event at parties. Lock up or hide the good stuff when strangers have access to your bar. I've witnessed some horrors, and they all involve good whiskey and whatever soda is in reach. Not the single worst thing I've ever seen drank but a monkey 47 gin and coke. Hated this the most purely because it is such an incredibly nice gin. It cost a lot of money, they had it with fucking coke, and I had to make it for them. This was at my work BTW, not at a party. I have a bottle in my cupboard at home and only select people can have it and not with coke ever. Other one I never understood was when we had 18th birthday parties come in and they'd all just order vodka, black currant and lemonade. Nothing too against that drink but it was a fairly up end cocktail bar where that cost 5 pounds instead of the cheaper bar next door where it cost around 2 pounds. If you're going to a nice bar at least buy a nice drink and don't just spend an extra 3 pounds per drink on the name of the bar. Not a party, but somehow my parents and I got into examining a cabinet full of champagne bottles that they had been gifted in better times. Multiple bottles of Dom Perignon, including a limited edition bottle, and view of click what, all in all, about maybe a dozen bottles of decent to very good quality, all stored upright for decades. For those who don't know, given long enough, the cork in champagne or wine bottles will dry out, leak out the carbonation, and spoil the vintage. We had to pour out hundreds of dollars worth of formerly good champagne. Using really nice craft beers for beer pong and flip cup. Those games involve chugging of beer and chugging ipers and dark beers is not fun especially after a while. Chugging a stout can be tremendously satisfying if you're hungry and thirsty. We have fight parties for all the big boxing fights and each bring a nice bottle of bourbon or scotch but there's one of my buddies who every time mixes them with 7up. I love him but I don't respect him. Buy him a snifter as a present and teach him how to use it. I'll wager that any alcohol snob here will not be able to consistently tell the difference between expensive and cheap versions of the same alcohol in a blind taste test. A good friend of mine is a trucker. He used to be a pretty heavy drinker, but because of his job he only drinks a couple of days every month or two. One day when he was back in town he asked me if I wanted to have some Johnny Walker Blue Label with him. Frick yeah, I've never had anything that expensive, and at the time I drank every day. The only thing better than free liquor is free good liquor. So I go over to his place, and he shows me this and open fifth of Johnny Walker Blue. He takes the bottle and goes in the kitchen to make us a drink. He brings back two big plastic cups full of ice, Diet Fago Cola, and one stroke three of the fifth in each cup. I couldn't believe that was how he was gonna drink this. I told him this, but he had a good point. I couldn't argue with, I paid for the freaking booze, and I'll drink it how I want. Beer Parasites. That's when you go to your friend's party and bring a really nice bottle of beer because you have a little clique of beer nerd friends you want to share it with, and then some guy thinks he deserves to partake because he brought a six. Pack of Yundling. Mixing any whiskey older than 10 years with anything. Yes you can have some of my Balvenie 21 or 17. But you mix that with cola I may bludgeon you in front of both your parents, probably with their consent. 
Idiots opening a beer, let it get warm and go for another beer. Idiots filling a fridge with expensive red wine because it's so much tastier like this. Idiots pouring half a glass of good vodka and the other half with shitty flavored vodka. I lost a lot of friends over the years. Well, not to burst your bubble too much, but some reds, especially higher quality, are supposed to be served slightly chilled. Not cold, mind you, just slightly chilled. My boss and his wife were both huge whiskey drinkers. For their wedding, they bought an incredibly expensive bottle. The plan was that the cake cutting would also be a bottle opening, where they would toast to their wedding. They were then going to save the bottle and have a single glass per year. On their anniversary, the bottle somehow made its way to the open bar, where the bartender made nothing but whiskey cokes and the like with it. They never even got to taste it. Gonna throw in one story of alcoholic virtue to counteract the many sins. My wife drank very, very little before we met. I'd introduced her to the world of booze as best I could, but she didn't like any of the whiskies I gave her. My stock was pretty heavily skewed to Isla, so I wasn't totally surprised. They can be a bit confrontational. The first time I took her home, my dad decided to remedy this. We offered her a nose of everything in the cabinet, and she dutifully perused them. She fixed on one. This is interesting. She picked up it and tried it. Oh, this is really good proceeds to sip away at it, chattering excitedly about what she could taste, and then asks for another. That whiskey was Springbank 21, and that was the first and last time I ever got the she's a keeper nod from my dad. 25 pounds, 40 dollars, a short Corvoisha XO cognac and coke, not even bottle coke, gun coke. It was the end of the night so I talked them down to just drinking it neat in a balloon glass. But boy was that a close one. Had a small night thing a few years ago and it was bio but I obviously provided some decent beers and offered some whisk. E. Why to people that didn't want a beer. It was a crappy year and I was celebrating it being over so I opened my Lagavulin in distillers edition. And a few people accepted. 30 minutes later I saw one of them with the same glass now full of ice and cook as well. The worst sin I ever committed, at 14, was mixing rum and Capri Sun, stolen out of my parents pantry. The worst sin I ever witnessed would probably be overpaying for expensive wine when you don't have a palate to appreciate it. There are plenty of low and mid range wines that are structurally made well and easy to enjoy. No need to blow $400 plus on wine that you have no way to taste the nuances of. Last week, my friend failed to quickly down an Irish car bomb, so the bailers started to curdle, and in attempt to make it drinkable he poured McEwan's export, amber ale, and buckfast into it. That did not make it more drinkable. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.